heavy mass star evolution. So the heavy masses, we can kind of include anything from about eight solar mass, that means heavier than the sun, to almost the super, super heavy mass, 50 or even 100, okay? So let's draw their evolutionary track. Let's see this picture. Okay, so they're starting out, instead of starting out here, see where the sun is, down here or in the middle, they're starting out heavier already and on this side. See, they're blue giants, and then they're starting to die. So they're going this way, they're going to turn yellow and then red, and then they might go back to yellow or they might just stay, they might loop back quickly and they might just stay red, you know. So then it goes back, then over here. Over here is similar event to planetary nebula, but much, much, much more violent, supernova explosion, okay? And then there, the core of the star goes, goes over here, ends up as a neutron star, okay? So they should draw a line here and end up over there. So let's draw that. So something looking like this, and then the core goes, ends up very, very small somewhere here. Somewhere in this vicinity. Okay. And this whole process takes much faster for the heavy star. The heavy star forms quicker, it lives much shorter, and it dies very fast. Okay. So the core of the star shrinks, so number one, 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 you know, as, it go, as it's going this way, heats up, outer layers enlarge, cool down, the star becomes a pulsating yellow giant. So if we draw the instability strip again, somewhere like this, let's say, whenever it's going through that strip, it's going to turn into a, a pulsating thing again, you know, pulsating giant. So it goes like this, one, one, two, 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 two. I mean, the two is happening all along because the two just says outer layers enlarge, cool down, the star becomes a pulsating yellow giant. But the pulsating part happens only when it's in that region. It starts pulsating, okay? But becoming a yellow giant becomes, um, is, is overall, you know. It could even be a yellow giant around here, but then it will start pulsating when it's going through the middle. And then over here, it's going to start turning to red giant, you know. The core develops shells of different elements as it fuses them. The hydrogen shell moves out and it fuses helium. Okay, this is kind of interesting. With the other kind of stars, the light stars or the medium mass stars, they could take hydrogen, fuse it to helium, and then they had to have a special event known as the helium flash. And then once they have the helium flash, they get hot enough, and then they turn helium into carbon, okay? These stars don't have that problem. They can fuse pretty much anything into anything. There's limits to that, of course. So they take Hydrogen, they fuse it into helium. Once that's done, then their core gets very, very hot. They fuse helium in, into something else. And then they take that other element, they fuse it into something else, and then so on and so on, until they get to iron. Iron is not fusible into anything else, you see? Remember earlier in the semester when I was telling you what are we made of, and I, I showed you the periodic table? And I said, oh, where do these, all these things come from? See, hydrogen, helium, and lithium come from the Big Bang. Uh, other heavier elements like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, maybe neon, these ones, they can come from light mass stars, light, medium mass stars. They can also come from heavy mass stars. But if you go to heavier stuff down the third row or 
heavier like here, they cannot come from light stars or medium mass stars. Only heavy stars give us those elements, okay? They're made, they're generated in the cores of heavy stars. So truly speaking, everything that we owe our lives to and everything we owe to the medium mass stars, but especially the heavy mass stars, they generate all those heavy elements. Next time you wear a diamond ring, gold ring, gold watch, say that came from a star, heavy mass star. Okay, that's where they were generated. And then psh, they spewed that stuff into outer space. When our Earth formed, it had the benefit of previous generations of stars dying, right? And our Earth had all of this, you know, the Earth just gulped out everything from previous stars. The picture says, you see here, it gets carbon, then neon, oxygen, silicon, finally reaches the core of iron. See figure 13, 18. See if we zoom in on this. See, this is where the action is taking place. You see the core? Most of the other star, not much happening. This is where the action is taking place, the core. These are only a sample of the elements made in the core. Uh, it took helium, then formed it into carbon. So hydrogen has already moved way out, you see. Then the helium is done. Then the carbon forms it into oxygen, you see. And that's the oxygen we need to breathe, <laughs> okay, you see. Without that, we can't live. And then oxygen forms an, into neon, neon into silicon. Without silicon, where would we be? Silicon chips, semiconductors, all of those things we use in our computers, the silicon made of silicon chip, those were made in stars too, okay? Uh, then finally, the iron core. When it comes to iron, Fe, the element Fe, it cannot fuse that. Therefore, what happens? The star cannot fuse it, the gravity takes over, makes the star collapse, okay? So roughly speaking, we could also take a look at this chart. Evolutionary stages of a 25 solar mass star. See, hydrogen fusion stage, that's the main sequence. Hydrogen fusion, H fusion. When it's main sequence, we call it Roman numeral five. The central temperature of the star is 40 million, uh, 40 million Kelvin. Central density, 5,000. Dura duration of the stage, 7 times 10 to the 6. So it will live 7 million years. 7 mil years. So for a 25 solar mass star, you see 25 solar mass. 25 solar mass. Its main sequence lifetime is 7 million years. That's very short. It's gone, 7 million. After that, it starts dying. It fuses helium. Okay, what I'm most interested in is in this last column, what's happening here. You see, 5 times 10 to the 5th. Its lifetime is 500,000 years. Uh, 500,000. Which is about a half a mil. So it lives 7 million years as a main sequence. Half a mil fusing helium, then it starts fusing carbon. It lives 600 years. My gosh, that's very short. But at least we need that because we get our carbon from that, you know. Then it fuses neon and it produces oxygen. Uh, that lasts one year. Then it fuses oxygen, silicon. Oxygen lasts six months. Silicon lasts one day. See, it gets down to the silicon, it fuses it about one day. Uh, okay, then what? It goes to the iron core. It gets to the iron core, it knows that it's done. Okay, last breath. Okay, 
Core of the star collapses. Core collapses. 0.2 seconds. 0.2 seconds it takes to collapse. The core bounces. So what happens? The core collapses, implosion. Then it bounces out, explosion. Implosion, explosion. You see? And that says milliseconds. And then the supernova explosion happens, takes hours. Takes hours. But what's happening to the core temperature? Uh, 40 million, 200 million, 600 million, 1.2 billion Kelvin. By the time you end up here, the core temperature is 2.23 billion Kelvin. 23 billion. In the meantime, as it's doing that, the core is getting hot, 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 hot. Why? It needs to be hot in order to fuse these heavier elements and give us the periodic table. You see, Without that, we wouldn't have the periodic table. We need a hot star with a really hot core. You see. OK, let's go back to the chart, uh, the, the drawing. So where should I put three on, on that chart? Uh, let's see here. For this kind of star, there is no particular event at this corner or at this corner. So it's a more gradual, smooth transition. So what I basically would put is 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. Now, when it goes back to the instability strip, it might also pulsate. So we could have two happening. You see? So it's pulsating, becomes a pulsating yellow giant, and then goes back. Three, 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 three. So basically, what is three saying? The star is going through this evolution cycle, becoming maybe a back to yellow, back to red, or perhaps just staying red. But in the meantime, the core is generating all of these materials, these elements. OK? Let's see what happens. By this time, the star has become red supergiant, 1a, 1b, or Roman numeral 2. So basically, 4 is also happening all along. Four, 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 four. You see, by the time it goes way over there, at this corner, see Roman numeral 1A. It's become, the, this is the super, the super, super large, biggest and baddest, I called it, you know. Uh, the silicon fusion stage only lasts one day. Remember that chart I showed you? So that means number five happens right before that corner and then it knows its last uh, breath it invites all of its cousins all of its friends says this is my will everyone my i leave money to this and this and this and then there's a fight that breaks out in the house <laughs> okay since iron cannot be fused the core collapses and rebounds in a few milliseconds and okay implosion explosion and a uh, supernova explosion happens. Its name is called type 2 supernova. Uh, there is a, don't tell me exactly why this type 2, type 1. It's kind of a, a misnomer. Um, I think this one perhaps should have been called type 1, but for historical reasons, it's been called type 2. Type 2 supernova explosion happens. Where does that take place? This corner right here. So basically, six is just before it dies, and then this corner, we can write like that, is 7, type 2 supernova. So it dies much more violent death than the light, the light match star. Let's take a look here. See, this is the remnant of a supernova. The other one, the planetary nebula I showed you, was a gentle death, you know. Uh, this one, huge explosion. It releases so much energy. If we could ever use this energy from a star as it's coming toward us, we, if we could trap it, that would be amazing energy. We wouldn't have energy problems for centuries and centuries. Uh, we could light our electricity, we could run our homes, our cities. We just need a way of trapping that energy coming our way, you know. Uh, that's more energy than perhaps the energy of an entire galaxy. This is another one, 
You see? Star explosion. You see a lot more violent looking. Jets of iron are shot out. Jets of silicon. Now, what should be at the center when this kind of star dies? Not a white dwarf, a neutron star. There's also chance that the center, there might be black hole, OK? Depends on the mass of the original star. So when it dies, it might end up as neutron star, or it might end up as black hole. So the remaining core becomes a neutron star. So what happens to the remaining core? It goes over here, step eight, 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 eight. Ends up all the way there. OK, if the parent star from which the neutron star came, if the parent star was 8 to 25 solar masses roughly, it will end up as a neutron star. If it's a really heavy star, its core is likely to end up as black hole. You see? So that's the idea there. No mysteries about it. Let's see, figure 13.3. This one shows you the cycle in terms of pictures. Interstellar cloud, protostar, bipolar flow, massive star, pulsating yellow. See, that was over here, right? Uh, the blue one. Then red supergiant, and it might never come back, back to yellow again. It might just stay red, OK? So it doesn't have to have uh, two two yellow stages or anything. You can just go massive star, yellow, red, explosion, supernova in the middle. But in the middle, there should be the remnant of the original star, black hole, or neutron star. OK? Interesting. Visuals, visuals, visuals. These pictures really help us to see what's going to happen. So this one says star forming clouds. See, protostar, more than 25 solar mass, supergiant, supernova, ends up as black hole. See, th this one also shows showing to us whatever we saw, but it's comparing all of them. This one is 8 to 25 solar masses, protostar, star, giant star, supergiant. See, this one goes faster. See, right away. Uh, so this one goes giant, supergiant, supernova, ends up as neutron star. Then when you go down, 0.4 to 0.8 solar masses, sun, giant, red giant. Uh, they should have here yellow, red, back to yellow. They should probably be back to yellow here, then back to red. So in the middle here, there should really be a yellow. Then back to red, release planetary nebula, white dwarf. Now these guys are very, very light, 0.08 to 0.4 solar masses. They might just go straight and then just die and end up as a white dwarf without having any of these red giant stuff. These guys really haven't died that much. Remember when I told you about their lifetime? They live so, so long. We haven't really observed too many of these guys, OK? So we, it's more theoretical. We expect it to just maybe go like that. Um, if the star is less than 0.08 solar mass, it's just called a brown dwarf. It missed becoming a star. So a brown dwarf just, just ends up brown. Just you know, we, Again, we haven't observed the death of these either. These ones last long. These ones last very, very long. But these ones we've observed a lot. Okay. 